write the formula for a function with the following properties. A vertical asymptote at both x equals 2 and x equals 5, x-intercepts at x equals negative 1 and x equals 6, a y-intercept at 3, and a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So uh, first of all, we'll just look at each of these individually and what they mean for a rational function. Now, because we have a rational function, we know that it's going to be a fraction. So we'll have a fraction here. Um, the numerator of the fraction is where our x-intercepts come from. So because x equals 2, sorry, x equals negative 1 is an x-intercept, that means that the factor x plus 1 has to be uh, uh, a factor in the numerator. Because x equals 6 is an x-intercept, that means that x minus 6 has to be um, a factor in the numerator as well. The denominator of our rational function is where our vertical asymptotes come from. So because x equals 2 is a vertical asymptote, that means x minus 2 will be a factor. And because x equals 5 is a vertical asymptote, that means x minus 5 will be a factor. Now, um, there's a couple things to consider here. First of all, the uh, the I'll actually talk about the horizontal asymptote. Because the horizontal asymptote is y equals 0, that means that the degree of the denominator needs to be larger than the degree of the numerator. Right now, both numerator and denominator have a degree of 2. So they're not, uh, so they're equal here. The numerator does not have a smaller degree. So in order to get a smaller degree in the denominator, we can just put an exponent higher than 1 on either one of these factors. It doesn't matter which one we do. So I'll go ahead and just put it on the x minus 5 because there's some space there that I can put. So now the degree of the denominator is 3. The degree of the numerator is 2. So since it's larger in the denominator, that gives us our horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. Okay, and now that I uh, have done that, um, I can address this y-intercept at 3. Now, the y-intercept is obtained by plugging 0 into the function. If I plug 0 into these x's here, I'm not going to get 3. Um, so what that means is there may be a leading coefficient here. I'm going to go ahead and just move that over. There may be some number out in front. Um, that number is what we'll use in order to get the 3 that we want. So to find that number, we're going to, uh, we're going to plug 0 in for x and then set the whole thing equal to 3. Because the y-intercept of 3 means that the point is 0, 3. So when x is 0, the function is equal to 3. So we have 3 equals a times 0 plus 1 times 0 minus 6 over 0 minus 2 times 0 minus 5 squared. Now we're going to go through and just simplify uh, this expression here. I have 3 equals a times, this is a 1 times negative 6, which is negative 6, over, this is negative 2 times 25, which is negative 50. Okay, now to simplify this, I have 3 equals a times, a negative divided by negative is positive, and this fraction reduces to 3 over 25. Okay, and now that um, we have this, we can solve for a by multiplying by the reciprocal of this fraction. So we'll multiply both sides by a 25 over 3. And uh, that will cancel this fraction out here. So those 3s are cancel, the 25s cancel. And here the 3s cancel as well. We get 25 equals a. And so we'll take that number and we'll put it back in up here. And so our function, by plugging that a in, we get 25 times x plus 1 times x minus 6 over the x minus 2 times x minus 5 squared. And that's going to be our function that has these given properties. Now this is not the only function that has those properties. 
uh, remember that I just chose to put this square on the x minus 5. I could have chosen um, either one of these to, to square. I also could have actually chosen any exponent higher than 1 uh, on to, to be on either of those. And so whatever exponent I choose and which factor I put it on, that's going to change what this a comes out to be. So there are actually an infinite number of possibilities of uh, functions, rational functions that have these properties.